Hello guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a 60s style dress in Blender 2.92. I'm going to teach you kind of the basics from a beginner's point of view of how to make clothing in Blender using the sewing function in the cloth sim. So one thing I'm also going to tell you is I'm making this, I'm going to try and make this blend file here without the dress, just a, um, this original T post animated character, which is my own, that I just animated. I'm going to try and make it available in the description below for free on free3d.com. Um, hopefully, they'll accept the model, and when you watch this, the link is available. If it's not, just wait a little bit. Hopefully, it's there in a few days. But you can download it, and then you should be able to follow along if you don't have your own animated character in a T pose, which kind of works best for making clothing. So with that said, here it is. I'll be making the finished blend file available on my Patreon, and I'll also be explaining towards the end some of the issues you may run into, it, like where it kind of shrinks up or falls through the character. Some of the things I get in the comments sometimes, I'm gonna try and touch on that a little bit, and hopefully this is relatively beginner friendly. So I think I've said enough. Um, let's get into this tutorial. So with your character in the initial T pose, what we're gonna do is is we're gonna get started by adding in a plane to our scene. Now you can see here I'm working from my front orthographic view. So I'm not in my side view, not in the right view, I'm in the front orthographic view. I've hit one on my number pad. And that's taking me into the front orthographic. If that doesn't happen for you, you can go to view and just go to the, um, where is it? I haven't used it in a while. Viewport and then just go front and then it'll take you to your front view. So once you've done that, you need to also make sure that your cursor here is in the center because sometimes people get this a little bit wrong. Um, this cursor here is this thing where if you go shift A and you add something into your scene here, it'll add it into wherever your cursor is. So if you want to set your cursor back, just go shift S and just go cursor to world origin. We want to make sure that little cursor there is roughly in the middle of your character. Okay. So, and the reason for that is because we're going to be working with a mirror and we're going to be working with symmetry. So whatever you add and you turn it into a cloth, you want to make sure it's symmetrical with the character. So let's go shift A and the first item we're going to add in is going to be a plane. So come here to your mesh options, add in a simple plane. And if the plane here active, we're going to um, just move it up. I've got the move tool here. You can also just hit G and then Z and just constrain it to the Z axis. That's what I usually do. I don't really bother using this little gizmo anymore. Some people when they're kind of new to Blender do, but once you get used to the hotkeys, just using G and then using Z, X or Y just is a lot quicker. So what we don't want to do, because um, I just, whenever I'm working with physics, I don't think it matters as much with cloth, but definitely when it comes to other types of physics, we um, try not to rotate in object mode over here. Okay, so whenever we're gonna do that, we wanna go into edit mode. You can also hit the tab key as a shortcut. And in edit mode, with all of this geometry selected, you can see here it's all active. We can go R, X, nine, zero, and hit enter. So we've essentially just rotated it 90 degrees on the X axis. And you can see here this little orange dot there is our origin point. And that's kind of roughly in the middle of the character here. And that's kind of where we want it. So while I'm in edit mode here, Okay, I'm going to take this plane that I've just rotated 90 degrees. I'm gonna go G, Y, and I'm moving it forward in my scene. I'm moving it till it's just in front of the subject here, um, but we don't want it to be penetrating. So make sure far enough in front, but definitely try not to go too far away. Just keep it relatively close. And like I said, we wanna be working with some mirrors here so we don't have to model both sides. So let's go over to our modifiers here, add modifier. And let's add in a mirror modifier. This is gonna make our lives a lot easier. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here to the edge select, select this edge here on the left, or your left, and go double G, so double G, and just slide it over so you can see it kind of parting away like that. Then come over here under your mirror modifier, enable clipping, and then go G, X, and move it back on the X, and it'll snap back in the middle there. So because you've enabled clipping. And now when you try and move that, it won't go anywhere. So now we've got one piece that's mirrored. So let's start by, um, so one good way not to overwhelm yourself when you're working with cloth is to make sure that you start with low, low poly geometry and then add in detail progressively. So let's start by taking the top edge here. We've got our edge select option here. And in our front of graphic view, we're gonna go G and just kind of move it down. And in this case, I'm gonna move it to about here but I don't wanna move it in too much. We want a little bit of overlap here under the armpits because it's gonna be kind of be wrapping around the subject here. And when in this case, because we're making kind of like the style of dress we're doing, I'm gonna take this edge in my front view, I'm gonna rotate it up like that. Doesn't make much sense now, but it will a little bit later. And I'm just gonna put it right here, 
just underneath the armpit there. Okay, that's exactly what we want. And then we're gonna select the bottom part of the dress here. And this is kind of up to you. If you want a really short dress, you can keep it there, but I'm gonna go just kind of like to the knees. And because this is kind of like a 50 style dress, it's gonna be a little bit more conservative anyway. So I think just probably around the knees or lower would make more sense. Um, but once again, really up to the style of dress that you're doing. And once you have that basic pattern there, right, we'll get to the shoulder bits, the shoulder straps later. But for now, we can actually add in some more geometry. So I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna go Control R, so hover over this edge here. And if you go Control R, you should see a yellow line appearing. And what you can do is roll your middle mouse button up, and that's gonna add more segments. Now I'm gonna add in a specific amount. I'm just gonna go with something that looks like this, okay? So about this much, don't go too low because we want this to have quite a bit of geometry so it deforms properly. So I'm gonna go with something like that. Okay, that's about enough to get started with. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hover over this edge now and I'm gonna go Control R and I'm gonna see a yellow line appearing. And then I'm gonna roll my middle mouse button once again and add in segments till it kind of looks squared out. So we have all of these little squares and now we have some geometry that can be deformed around our character, which is fantastic. So now we can go to our edge select here. Oh, it's already enabled, what am I doing? And this is where we're gonna kind of make the shoulder part. So we don't wanna to go too far in, it's gonna look really weird. So what you wanna do is come about here where the shoulder um, starts on your character or your subject, and you're gonna come here and select an edge, holding and shift, just select the edges up to about this much, okay? And then you can go E to extrude, and you can extrude it up to about where the ears are, and I know it seems quite long, but maybe just underneath where the bottom of the ears are on your subject. And then you're gonna go S and just kind of scale that a little bit, but not too much. And then you can come hover over one of these edges, go Control R, and then once again, roll in some edge, um, some cuts. Okay, so we're gonna go with something like that. We're trying to match the size of these squares up with these ones, roughly, okay? And once we've done that, um, we can get into the next part. So um, there are two ways we can go about this. Um, I'm trying to think about, um, so this is one of those things where it's kind of, you can already grab this dress and you can extrude it out like this to make the back part. But then if we already, it might make it a little bit more tricky removing some of the bits here that we need to remove to make the segments. Um, I'll, I'll just show you. So let's just actually start then by extruding. I think that's the approach we'll take. So with all of this selected, we're gonna just go E to extrude. And once again, the exact same thing, we don't want any sort of penetration here. So just go and move it along the Y once you've extruded it till it's at the back of the subject like so, right? And one thing we can already start doing is just selecting, go to your face select option here. And we're just gonna select these faces in here, in the inside here. So holding and shift, you can select all of these or you can just select this face and then shift control and then click on this one. It'll select everything in between. So we want to grab these guys here and we will go X and we want to delete those faces, okay? And then we want to grab all of these ones here, like so, all the way down to here, all of these ones in the arm section here, like this L shape here. We want to select all of those faces, hit X and delete faces. And then we want to do the same thing with the bottoms. Anywhere where there is an opening, you want to delete those faces, okay? So that's all for now. And you can see here, we've kept these sections here. We're gonna kind of delete them, but we're gonna leave the edges in. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So select these guys here, and also these guys here. Just select all of these faces on the side, okay? Another easy, quick way to do that, if you don't know the shortcuts, is just go to your right orthographic view and wireframe, just drag and select, and you should have all of those selected, okay? And once you do that, you can go X, and you can go delete only faces. Now it's super important that you only delete the faces because we want these edges here to be left. And that's gonna kind of tell the cloth sim where to pull verts together so the whole dress doesn't just fall apart into two pieces. So once you've done that, you can now decide where you want to kind of make the art details, like the different sections. I'm gonna start roughly at about this. I'm gonna select this um, guy over here, this face, and then holding in shift and control, I'm gonna come down follow along here and click on this one. And it's gonna loop select or edge select all of these here. And I'm gonna go and do the same ones at the back. So follow along and I'm gonna holding and shift, click on this one, shift control and then click on this one. 
make sure not to select the wrong ones. So just, I think I've actually selected the wrong ones. So just these ones here. So one easy way to look is just to go into your front of a graphic view, hit Z and go to wireframe and they should line up. Okay, make sure they're the same ones. Then you can go X and delete only faces. Very important. And then we're gonna come here and skip two rows and we're gonna do the exact same thing. Come down here, skip two rows like that. Go to your front of graphic view, Z, wireframe, make sure they line up. Hit X and delete only faces. So we only have those edges kind of connecting them like that, okay? And that could be it for now if you want, but I'm gonna add one more little detail that I think looks really cool. And I saw this on a reference on um, Pinterest. I'm gonna click on this um, face here and I'm gonna go all the way down here, shift alt, click on this bottom one. Just trying to select a whole row down to the bottom. Then I'm gonna go X and delete only faces. And it's gonna kind of create this little floating island here, which is what we want. And we're not going to do it on the back. So it's not necessary in the back, just the front. And then you, this is optional here, but I'd recommend it. I'm gonna try and make this a separate piece. So just select these faces here and these faces at the bottom here. Hit X and delete only faces. So now you only have edges connecting those like that. And um, now we can actually get into our cloth simulation. So we might come in here and tweak things a little bit. For now, just leave it. So we're gonna tab out of edit mode. And um, one thing you need to know, so you might already have a character that you've rigged and it's posed, but you need to select your character mesh and you need to make sure that you go to your physics and you make sure that it has a collision. If you don't have a collision, the cloth isn't gonna know to interact with the subject, so you need to make sure to give it a collision. It's also important that whenever you add a collision, you need to make sure that when you go and select the subject and you go to your modifiers, that it's always gotta be um, underneath the armature here. If it's above the armature, it's not gonna work. So always make sure it's just underneath that, like so. And now this is gonna know to interact with the mesh. So make sure you're in frame one and then select the actual clothing. You need to go to your physics as well. That's where our cloth is and just give it a cloth. Now, um, if you were to actually hit the space bar and play this, it's not gonna do much for you because we actually need to go and do a little bit more with the settings here. So let's go over down on our cloth here and we need to go to the shape. And under the shape here, we need to enable sewing, so or sewing, okay? So click on sewing. And now, if you go to frame one and you hit the space bar, that's kind of what we're looking for here. And you can see that looks a lot better, um, but it's not quite what we want. And I'm gonna show you, it looks like really kind of more like a granny dress. It's not very elegant. So this is kind of where you can come in and do a little bit of editing. And because we haven't baked this yet, um, it's fine. We can just kind of drag back like this and go into edit mode and just kind of make it a little bit better. So let's come over here to our proportional editing and then go here to your vertex select option and then hit Z, go into wireframe. And now we can kind of just select. So I'm just clicking here and dragging and selecting these verts. And in our front of graphic view with proportional editing enabled, we can just go G and move it and roll our middle mouse button to control the fall off and just kind of make it a little bit more elegant. Like just try and make it actually fit the pattern or order the subject a little bit better. Like this, okay? Doesn't have to be perfect, so I'm just bringing it all in like this. And then um, we're gonna go back into object mode. And on frame one, we're just gonna hit the space bar again. We're gonna keep trying this till it looks right. So you can see over here, it's not looking quite right. Um, some dresses have kind of like a wider part here in the middle and the bottom, but I don't quite like that. So I'm gonna tab out of edit mode and I'm just gonna come and just select these verts here. You don't have to do this, but I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna select these verts here. I'm gonna go X and delete vertices just to get rid of that column. And I'm just gonna select these guys here and with that proportional editing enabled. So just selecting these verts, I'm gonna go S, roll my middle mouse button down and just kind of scale that a little bit. And I'm gonna do the same thing at the back here. Once again, you don't have to do this. It just really depends on what you're going for. So just something like that. Tab out of edit mode, go to frame one and then hit the space bar. And that's kind of how you do it. So kind of a process of elimination. You can see here it's a little bit too saggy under the armpit. So just tab into edit mode, select these two verts under the armpit, go to your front view and just move them in a little bit closer, tab out of edit mode, 
go to frame one and hit the space bar. And this is all you're essentially gonna do till it kind of looks right. Now at the moment, it doesn't look too fantastic because one of the issues you're gonna see here, the dress kind of looks like it's floating here. So we need to just go click on the subject here, go to the collision, and under here, under the thickness outer and inner, we need to make these values smaller. So in my case, I'm just gonna go point, um, zero, 0.01, and I'm gonna make this one down here smaller, point zero, 0.01, go to frame one, and now I'm gonna hit the space bar and see if that gap is a little bit better. Okay, so that's a little bit better. So you can keep decreasing that number till it looks right, but I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. Then I'm gonna select the dress, and I'm gonna go back to the physics, and one thing we need to do to add more realism to this that is gonna slow it down a bit, but we need to add in self-collision so the dress can actually react to itself. So we're gonna go over here to our physics, go down to the collisions, and click on self-collision, and we can leave the quality steps as they are right now, and then just go back to frame one, then hit the space bar, and that's already looking quite a lot better. Okay, so let's just quickly add a few more things here. Let's just go to object mode with the dress selected, Enable Shade Smooth. And let's just also go over to our modifiers and on top of the mirror and the cloth or underneath it, we're gonna add a solidify modifier to give it some thickness. And then we're gonna minimize that and we're gonna give it a subdivision surface modifier. In fact, just grab the subdivision surface modifier and put it above the solidify by dragging it. So what we have here is the mirror, the cloth, the subdivision surface, and then the solidify. Okay, and make sure they're in that order for this to work. And now you can kind of see the pattern a lot better. So just let it play the animation starting at frame one and you should see a nice looking dress like that. And remember this is a 50 styles dress. So if it looks a little bit weird, it's kind of not in this error. So let's just kind of grab this dress and let's go to our materials. And this will just, this isn't a shading tutorial, but just so we can see things better, I'm just gonna add a material and I'm just gonna come here to the viewport display, and I'm just gonna give it a color, okay? Any kind of color, it doesn't really matter. Then I'm gonna create another color, go new, I'm just gonna leave the viewport as white, tab into edit mode, and then I'm just gonna select some of these sections, okay? That I want to be a specific color. Um, just so that I can see them standing apart. So I'm just selecting these verts like this. I'm just gonna come here to solidify. Just grabbing these guys and then I'm assigning a different color. You don't have to do this. I, I just like doing it so you can see it, the differences here. Just selecting these guys and adding a different material. So this is something I'm not gonna really go into too much detail because it's already so um, simple. So the main focus here is actually the cloth. I um, might just scale that in a bit. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this anymore. We're just gonna get into the final caching. But yeah, that's all I did, It's just added that as an extra detail. And yeah. So let's just quickly um, cache this out. Now caching is where we just kind of essentially, you know, make sure you save this file somewhere. Then go to your physics. And with your cloth here selected, we wanna go over to our cache. And in this case, the our animation here, mine in this case, is 120 frames long. So at the end frame value here under the cache, I'll make it 120. Because I obviously I don't want the whole thing to run to 250 if the animation isn't even that long. And we know that the animation is starting at frame one, as we can see here, so let's just leave it at frame one. Now we're gonna come here and click on bake. And it's essentially gonna bake this cloth sim into our um, blend file here. And then we'll save it again and I'll show you what it looks like. So that's just gonna take a few minutes and I'll get back. And there we have it, it's now finished caching. Make sure whenever you cache just to save the file and then go you know, to frame one and let's hit the space bar and see what it looks like. So there we can see we have a nice looking cloth simulation that is playing along with our animation. Now once again, I did show you like you could spend some more time <laughs> moving things around. So I didn't, in this case you can see I might have to um, up the friction a little bit because the dress is kind of sliding off. Um, that's not quite what we want, but you know, you can kind of get the idea here. So um, it, look, it looks pretty good, it's a nice looking dress. So in this case, if you do have it sliding off, what you need to do is obviously just delete the bake. Okay, so just delete the bake. And then you have to just come into edit mode and simply just move things around. In this case, I can grab the, in edit mode, just grab these verts over here. I have proportional editing enabled. I'm just gonna go G and just kind of move them over closer to the subject 
like this. So they're not kind of um, out so much. Then I'm going to select the subject and I'm just going to go to the collision. And I'm just going to go over here to the friction and it's on fi at 5 at the moment. I'm going to make it something like 10. Okay. Now if we go and select the cloth again, make sure to save the blend file and go ahead and just click bake again. And um, let's see if that looks a little bit better. So I could redo this tutorial and not show you guys this mistake, but sometimes that happens. And then I'm just showing you what you might be able to do about it if you run into that issue. So once this is done, um, let's see if that issue is better. Okay, so it's now done caching in and let's go to frame one, hit the space bar. And there we can see that looks a lot better. Um, hopefully it doesn't slide off the arms this time. Um, we'll, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so it's a little bit better, but still sliding off. But um, anyway, this is how you make a nice cloth simulation in Blender. And um, hopefully you guys um, enjoy this. I'm going to be putting this blend file on Patreon. And I'll probably work on it a little bit more just to make sure those sleeves don't slide off. There's some things I'm going to do about that. But what I'm going to do now as well is I'm going to just show you guys some issues you may run into when you do this. Um, in fact, I'm just going to quickly fix that. I think one thing I could do um, besides just upping the friction is maybe it will not even look decorative. I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to select an edge back here and I'm going to go E, X and extrude along the X till they snap together. Then I'm going to come over here, control R and just roll in some extra geometry like that. And now with that little extra section there, tab out of edit mode and I'm just going to delete the bake and just rebake it and hopefully that um, helps that out. So let's just see what happens there. Okay, so that's done caching. So hopefully that little uh, trick there will help this. Um, one thing, if, if you're playing the animation, it's a bit laggy, just select the dress and go to your modifiers and you can just in the viewport here, disable the subdivision surface modifier. It'll still show in the render and that should just speed things up a little bit. So that's what I'm just gonna quickly do. And now you can see it's working the way it needs to work. And I think it looks pretty cool. So I, sorry I had to do that. I'm a little bit OCD about it. It's sliding off. I had to fix that. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, I'm going to quickly show you some issues you may run into. So sometimes what happens is people complain oftentimes or mention in my comments that their dress just shrivels up into the body. And oftentimes that's simply just because the dress is too small compared to your model. So in that case, you could just scale it up a little bit. Go control A and just make sure to apply the scale when you do do that always apply to scale and that most of the time will help but another thing you might have to look at is actually going to your cloth and under the shape here actually um, when you enable the sewing make sure to kind of mess around with the max sewing force and the shrinking factor now I could go into what those are kind of but it's kind of irrelevant because I've always figured that um, found out it's always very different depending on what you do, the character, the scale of your scene. So that's one of those things you're just going to have to experiment with and recache. But in the most part, if you just spend like a few minutes trying some things out, um, you'll figure out what works for you. And it's really not that hard and intimidating. So if you run into those kind of shrinking up, shriveling up issues, make sure to look into that. Some people have said it just falls through the character. Once again, make sure you add a collision to the subject and also make sure the collision is in the right place in your hierarchy. That's a big mistake people sometimes make. Um, I'll be making this model available on my Patreon, like I said, and I've got some other cloth examples on there from previous tutorials as well, by the way, and there's a lot of stuff on there, and I really do appreciate the support I'm getting on Patreon. It really helps me to keep making this sort of content. So I think that's enough said for now about making this sort of 60s style dress. Um, I'll see you guys next time for a, another tutorial.